Real quickly before we jump into the video, I want to let you guys know about something that if you guys are on PlayStation 4 and you want to take advantage of some double XP, well, unfortunately, as it stands right now within the Resistance event, there is no double XP events other than double division XP going on. But if you want to rank up your soldier, if you want to rank up your weapons, unfortunately, the dates don't match up right now with the current Resistance event. That is, unless you have the Resistance DLC, because as of today, we ended up getting a playlist update that made double XP on Resistance specific playlists have double XP, double division XP. And double weapon XP from now until Monday. So that goes for core, hardcore, intercept 24 7 as a part of the celebration for the launch of DLC 1. Again, it's only for PlayStation 4 users at the very moment, but I would just imagine that Xbox One and PC get their time to shine when the DLC playlists come out for them. So it'll all equal out in the long run. But for those of you guys that are on PlayStation 4 and want to take advantage of another weekend of double XP in the sense of actually ranking up your soldier, make sure you have the DLC and check it out for yourselves. And jump in there. But that said, Double Division XP still does apply until the change of the calendar for the Resistance event coming Tuesday, but I want to let you guys know about this before we jumped into the main bulk and beef of this video, so make sure you go check it out, grab some extra XP. So quick question for you guys, did you jump in on the very first flat gun event within World War II? Now, if your answer is no, you're like me and many other players that are like, what are you talking about? The flat gun event hasn't started. That's where you're partially right and partially wrong, because we ended up seeing our first introduction of the flak events here in the past 24 to 36 hours in World War II. Albeit not for everybody, but we do have some indication as to what this will be like and what it will mean going forward. So today I want to talk a little bit about the flak gun events in detail, letting you guys know about everything you'll need to know once this goes live fully. And for those that may have experienced it already, you already had a first hand experience here of it. And for those that are wondering even how we ended up getting some experience in the first place, we'll talk about that as well. But that said, the flak event went live for some people within World War II, once again, within the last 24 to 36 hours, but not for all. Myself, I didn't get to experience it, and I'm actually kind of jealous of those that did because it looks pretty cool, looks pretty fun, and a nice social experience. But that said, if you did take part of it, you ended up being part of a very select few regions of the world that ended up getting this rolled out in World War II at the moment. Right now, they seem to be incrementally testing and rolling it out to everybody, and we'll see this may be coming in full within say a week to two weeks time. There is no ETA at the very moment, but there have been various reports of it happening in certain regions and other people like myself being like, wait a second, what? Where did this come from? Now, initially, I thought that maybe the playlist update from yesterday and the one from today would actually be the way that we end up seeing this come in, where it would fully push this out to everybody, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Last night's playlist update was something that fixed an XP issue with Ranked, fixed a Zombies bug, and two issues with Demolition, which, by the way, they're making some fixes to Demolition before it even goes live, so kind of strange to see, but interesting nonetheless. Then today's hot fix was simply a playlist to update and add in the double XP, for the Resistance playlist, like we mentioned just a few moments ago. So that said, unfortunately, if you didn't experience it already, these updates won't do anything in the sense of being able to do that. Now, that's not to say that you might get it incrementally rolled out later tonight, maybe tomorrow, the day after, but for what it's worth, these updates did not address anything in the terms of the flak event itself. But one thing to bear in mind is this is very similar to what we saw with the headquarters feature, it being rolled out to everybody and probably going to follow the same path in that sense, because if you guys remember, when the solo headquarters was implemented because there were so many connectivity issues and all sorts of things with the launch of World War II, it started to roll out in various regions to test the population in headquarters. And then a couple of days later, maybe a week or so for some people, we ended up getting the full integration of populated headquarters to which we still see it now for the majority of the world. Apparently there are some various regions that do not have a populated headquarters still, but that is the same situation in which I would expect this to be happening now with the flak event where we see it gradually start to come out, rolling out to everybody, and we'll have it very shortly for everybody. Now, as for what the flak event will offer, that's where I'm very interested and very intrigued, because this was something that, once again, we knew of from launch. We even saw it in the headquarters trailer before launch, and then we didn't really get much of anything. 
Even the strategy guide was something that ended up talking a lot about the flak event and gave us some details or rough ideas of what we'd end up getting. As for actual quantities of the rewards given, that we still don't really know, but we do have a little bit more insight now because some people have actually experienced this flak event. So right off the bat, it seems like it's something that you can actively participate in or choose not to if you want, because there is some, once again, very bit of footage that we end up having from this in which we can see still a lot of AFK people in the headquarters, but if you end up jumping on the flak guns, you have the ability to shoot down the incoming enemy aircraft. And all around you, you see a bunch of different care packages and supply drops that are dropping to the ground in the headquarters for you to go and collect. Now, I'm assuming that if you're on the flak guns, you're not going to be able to actively go after these supply drops and care packages simply because you're doing work on these aircraft. And so it kind of comes down to, once again, a community-wide thing where people either jump on the flak guns, there's only a couple of them, so anybody else that wants to take part, they can collect those drops whenever they end up reaching the ground. Now, one thing that I found strange out of the report was that somebody said it was an automatically manned thing where it automatically filled the flak guns with players in it. But if you end up taking a look at some of the imagery from the strategy guide or from some of the different teases we've had about it, we end up seeing that it says to get to the flak guns. So it's something you have to consciously go and do, not just get randomly placed inside. And if that's the case in which you do get randomly placed inside, I'm hoping that for the sake of the headquarters and the people that want to be involved in this, it doesn't place AFK players in there, which I think would be very strange to do. But I mean, if it's randomly placed, I guess there's really no way to decipher who is active and who is not if they're all relatively set on the same activity time frame before somebody ends up getting kicked. So I don't know, that's interesting and we're gonna have to take a look at that going forward, but hopefully it's something that is balanced out in the sense that it can work out for the community's favor. Now we know how you end up being a part of it and we know what you have to do by shooting down and collecting, but what do the rewards look like? Is it something substantial that you really wanna actively participate in? Well, that I think comes down to subjective opinion and that's something that really comes down to what you think of the outcomes. And they're really right now from these preliminary testing and these few that actually happened, it doesn't look like there's a stable basis of the amount of things that you end up getting. And the rewards that you end up getting for this are armory credits. So it seems like there's not any set number for say whatever you end up doing, but it seems like it is determined on the level of involvement that you have in the flat gun event. So one report that I ended up seeing was somebody actively participating and taking part of the flat gun event in the sense of they were shooting down the planes. They ended up getting 90 armory credits as a result, but then somebody also who was going around and just collecting the airdrops ended up getting 40. So it seems like once again, based on that level of engagement, but it also doesn't seem like it's all that much that is given to be taking part in this. So at the very moment, it seems like it is a low number that you end up getting for a reward for taking part of this, which is something many people might not be too fond of, but you also have to bear in mind this is going to happen when everything all rolls out, when it's all said and done and all implemented, it's gonna happen every 30 minutes. So while of course you don't have too much, it comes down to a developmental process of balancing what is too much and what is too little if somebody wants to just sit there and farm armory credits every 30 minutes. So while personally I can understand where it definitely looks like a small amount, it is also something very tough from an administrative perspective on getting that number right. Because you will have people that just want to farm this stuff and not really take part in terms of say the multiplayer aspect and while that might be a small minority, it's gonna be there in the sense that people will attempt that. So you have to try and find that balance. I personally still would love to see these armory credits increase in the sense of getting the rewards a little higher. Don't get me wrong on that, but that's probably the reasoning behind why it is so low at the moment compared to what many people might expect. Now, personally, I'd also love to see some social score thrown in there every so often maybe, just because it's a massive social event. Many people have to take part in it and come together in the headquarters to do one common goal. So I think it'd be awesome to rank up your social score if possible because I'm struggling man I'm struggling to rank up on that and I just don't have the time to sit in headquarters and fish for commends or anything like that but maybe we can see that implemented I love that but I don't know. That said, rewards right now are subjective again in how you interpret it, but that's what it is right now. And seemingly this is pretty much all we know and need to know about headquarters and the flak event that will be coming soon. Of course, if you guys are completionists, there are challenges for this. So bear that in mind if you guys are looking to go for that or you're not really too fond of it, but you wanna get all the challenges done. So that's gonna be something to keep in the back of your mind as well. But all in all, it's something that once again is rolling out to everybody incrementally here within the world in different regions. 
If you didn't have it, well, you're not alone. I myself and many, many other people did not as well, but you can start to expect a little bit more of this coming in the next couple of days as it rolls out incrementally to more people, and then hopefully to everybody in total, to which we'll once again be able to shoot down enemy aircraft and then collect supply drops or care packages that end up dropping for an armory credit reward. Personally, once again, I'd still love to see some social score in there, but I don't make the big bucks and make those decisions. So that's it. If you guys have been a part of one of the regions that ended up getting this rolled out, let me know your thoughts on this. Do you guys think it's a lot of fun? Do you think it's something very cool? Or if you're like me and which you haven't actually played around with this, are you guys excited for this at all? Do you guys not really care all that much? Do you think it's a really cool feature, but you're kind of on the fence on it? Whatever it may be, let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. But that's where we're going to wrap it up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding Call of Duty World War II. And of course, if you guys are interested in anything regarding tips, tricks, news, best class setups, information, all that good stuff, we got you covered here up on the channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected outside of YouTube. Practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. But all that's it, Natalie. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. Mine is an espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.